Hi, everyone. My name is Jake Barnett. I'm Director of Sustainable Investment Stewardship at Westpath. I'm here today to be speaking to you about our environmental uh, stewardship and climate justice efforts and appreciate the time to speak to you all on the important work you're doing at the Loving People and Planet Workshop. I want to get started with a broad view as to why does Westpath invest time and energy and resources in trying to promote the transition to a sustainable global economy more broadly. Really, this is grounded in a couple of charges we're given from the Book of Discipline. The first is to look at how do we do everything in our power to help our participants, beneficiaries, and institutional investors meet their financial goals. And really, when we look at that important undergirding of financial fiduciary duty is the term that's used often in investor circles, we think that a sustainable global economy is fundamental for people meeting those goals. The second aspect that we're charged with is to aspire to support and live into the UMC social principles. And within our definition of a sustainable global economy as one that promotes social cohesion, long-term prosperity for all and environmental health, we see a lot of connections back to many aspects of the social principles. So for today, I'm gonna to focus in on environmental health and I'm gonna tell just a couple of stories related to our corporate engagement as well as broader collaborative initiatives we're supporting. Let's start with corporate engagement. We engage in a number of ways on environmental health and climate justice with the portfolio companies directly held um, by Westpac. One example is Cummins, a diesel engine manufacturer based in Indiana who we engage as part of the Climate Action 100 Plus initiative. With Cummins, they were one of the first companies in our portfolio to, in, to commit to net zero, um, meaning that they were committing to transform their entire business model to be much more reliant on renewable energy and electrification of vehicles. And we continue to see them as a leader within our portfolio today. We're also engaging on issues that might not necessarily be immediately intuitive, such as beef production. So JBS, Brazilian-based beef producer, um, one of the largest in the world. And many of you may know that uh, agriculture, uh, both through deforestation and through methane emissions from cows, can be a major contribution uh, contributor to global warming. So with JBS, after a couple of engagements in collaboration with other investors. They recently set in fall of last year, a commitment to not only achieve net zero, but to do so with third party verification that their targets are meeting the science required to support a broader global transition to net zero. So an exciting initiative there. Finally, an area where we're engaging more on issues of climate justice is with WEC Energy Group utility based here in the Midwest. With WEC, we're talking to them not only about the need to transition their power sourcing from coal and natural gas more to uh, renewable power, but we're also talking to them about how do they do that in a way that's just relating to workers and communities that have been longstanding partners to the company. So those are some corporate examples. I'll finish off just sharing some more industry-wide initiatives that we're taking part in. Shared a little bit about WEC Energy Group and that experience engaging with utilities has been leveraged by ourselves and other investors to come up with more of a holistic view for what we see that sector needing to do to support the transition to net zero because that electrification of the economy is so important. And it's also vitally important that that electrification be delivered in a way that's sourced from renewable clean energy. Another example of an industry initiative is we were the second US-based signatory to the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance, a UN convened group that now represents over $10 trillion in assets. And we actually serve as co-leads on two of the different tracks of the asset manager initiative. I'm the co-lead of the engagement track and my colleague Ryan McQueenie is co-lead of the communications track. 
So we're doing really exciting work there about asset owners such as ourselves engaging asset managers like BlackRock or State Street or Vanguard to make sure that they're representing our interests. And finally, one of the most exciting elements that I personally get to take part in is that we help to lead the United Methodist Church agency commitment to net zero, which many of the agencies have signed on to saying we're going to transition our ministries, facilities, operations and investments to net zero in collaboration with each other by 2050. So that's just a short snippet of what we do today. Happy to talk more and to answer any questions later in the workshop. Thank you.